Hi, Michael from Machination Studio. Um, it's been a long time since I've done any sort of a built video. It seems like, well, it's pretty much half a year really. Um, since I've completed my build for the Comic Con, the New York Comic Con. I guess that particular video series was more like an assembly series rather than a build series um, because there wasn't the design aspect of the process in, in, in there. So I'm going to start a new, I suppose, a, a new build log and uh, this is probably a, a while coming but uh, yeah I've been distracted along the way like I, I mean since the New York Comic Con once I was back I was busy doing the studio so you guys saw all the videos of me doing the studio and and then January and February came around and I had to prepare for TED and um, yeah uh, you guys got a little bit of, of that and my video for TED is not out yet that it hopefully would be at some point um, and after that I've been, well, not exactly busy, but uh, I've had to have uh, one or two more speaking commitments. Uh, one with the TEDx Singapore and the other with the uh, local um, hardware hacker group. So, so the, those videos are, are, are up as well. Um, I haven't actually been completely idle uh, <laughs> since that time. A lot of it was, 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 was thinking about where do I go next with my project? And, and I think what I really want to do first thing first is that come Monday, this is Saturday, come Monday, I will send out my um, application for New York Comic Con 2016. So, so I hope that they would, uh, they would be happy to see me back there again. Mm, and what I think I want to be able to, sh to, to show at that point is a new design that I can do in some sort of a small production run. I'm seriously thinking of perhaps crowdfunding or some other sort of um, pre-order indication method where, where uh, I'll probably hope to launch it at that point when I go to uh, Comic-Con or Comic-Con will be shortly after that. Um, so it comes to what can I do with my current design that um, can make it more manufacturable. I mean, I, I've, I've spoken to people and, and they almost, one or two of them actually came back to me and, 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 and said that, yeah, you need to reduce your part count by about a factor of 10. Oops, uh, yeah, should I put my phone on silent mode? That was uh, completely unprofessional. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I have to pretty drastically reduce my part count because I need to change the materials that I, I build it with. I think 3D printing at this stage uh, is not tenable for small run production, it's not tenable for the bulk of the toy. So I'm actually really looking at, if, if, if the demand is low, I'm looking at resin casting. If the demand is higher, I might look at um, soft vinyl uh, 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 molding or, or even injection molding. I, I seriously doubt my demand will get that high, but uh, for soft tooling, it might actually be considerable because this is actually a premium product and, and, and most of the cost would go into um, the painting and, and, and the customizing of the, of the, of the product that the, yeah, I'll have to really look at the numbers there. So, um, yeah, so part count, and of course a lot of you have asked the question, you know, does it come in a kit? So I guess this, at this point, you know, if you're watching this video and you have some opinions, please put it in the comments. Uh, would you like a kit, like a resin kit, like a, you know, garage resin kit? Um, would you like it uh, to be, you know, what do you think about partially injection molded and resin what do you think about partially soft vinyl you know like action figure car kind of materials and resin um, what do you think if it's smaller i'm definitely thinking about making it smaller because one of the things is that the two downsides of having really large thing well the upsides are, are apparent is is really impressive the downsides are that 
it is really expensive to ship once you get above a certain size like once you get like near the two feet you know you're not going to have a fedex box that's going to fit it all right you're not going to be within the sort of um, weight and, 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 and size range that your regular couriers can give you a fairly good discounts on it. So I'm definitely looking smaller. And the other downside is that not everybody has a sort of space to display it. It's great, it looks great, it's big, but yeah, not, not everybody has got the sort of shelf space. And the third downside, I just thought of it, is that because of the size, the weight of the object itself is enough to damage itself. Um, if, 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 if you think about a lot of toys that you own, if, you, if it tipped over, don't, don't say if you dropped it from a high place, but if you tipped it over, it doesn't damage itself. Its weight is light enough that you know, each, of the, each of the parts that are sticking out don't get damaged if it tips over. Uh, and, but, but for the Colossus, it actually does. It's, it's big enough, it's heavy enough that if it tips over, I'll, I'll see some damage. So that's, that's, that's the few things. So I am definitely, my, one of my new requirements is gonna be smaller. And, and, and to give you a rough idea how small it is, I think it should fit in one of the cubby holes in like an Ikea um, um, Expedit slash Calyx shelf, right? So, so, so those things are like, uh, well, those things are like, I think about 35 cm square interior. So something along those lines. So larger than one foot square. Is, is, is where I'm kind of looking at at the moment. Um, yeah, because I think, I think a lot of people display their toys in, in shelves like that or you know, the, in, in the detail uh, uh, glass shelves. So I'm kind of looking at something that would fit into that sort of a footprint. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I've been kind of uh, having to, to think about with um, with the feedback that was that I got from speaking to people in Comic Con, speaking to people at TED, and speaking to you know um, um, potential uh, manufacturers and stuff like that, so I have started looking at okay, I can't have uh, as complex a mechanism. So I've been exploring different mechanisms. Uh, one of the things that I was exploring was uh, I used to own or well, I'd own these. Uh, um, creature combat creatures attack knit thing which is like a kind of a six-legged robot thing that has a nerf gun on top um, I really really like the walking mechanism it's a really elegant walking mechanism it runs on two motors two like very simple cheap uh, uh, kind of a six volt motors and it's able to turn and move in any direction and I think that's great but the downside of it is that well first of all there is a patent on the design and, and, and I've kind of sent them an email but I haven't gotten any word back on that. The second downside of it is that it has a really, really high part count. There's lots of different parts that, 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 that works together uh, for it to work in such an elegant way. And that doesn't quite fit with my current part count. So what I did was uh, did more research about what other people were doing for, for simple uh, hexapodal movement because I, I think I think the the six-legged thing is is part of the world that I created for Conan Colossus and I want to I want to extend that I, I don't want to suddenly go okay I'm gonna gonna give up on legs I'm gonna go do wheels instead um, I might do that in the future but at this point I don't think that's where I want to that's where I want to go so um, yeah so the next thing is that I, I found this guy who, who put up something on Think, Thingiverse. I'll, I'll put the link on in the, in the description. And he made this little um, very simple uh, hexapodal movement based on three servos. And I quite like it. Um, so I adapted it. I made a bigger version uh, with uh, some laser cut MDF and um, 3D printed joints. I made a test and the test works. I think it, it does uh, do what I want it to do even at this very simple stage. So I might use that as the walking mechanism for this new, this new design which is like I said will be smaller, um, will potentially come as a kit, will be uh, but all the other kind of fun things 
that you will associate with Conan Colossus will be in there like you know spinning guns and lights and 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 and, and moving parts and stuff like that and of course uh, 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 it will be it will be painted nicely I'm, I'm actually currently contacting somebody in Hong Kong about about that so um, still very early days I've got very simple prototype walking mechanism going but it looks like it can work out so so let's see how this uh, 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 this design uh, moves forward and and I'll keep you guys updated thank you single take excellent